this feels like. I'm definitely gonna break it. Why would anyone do this to a $2,000 monitor? Well, maybe because they waited 10 years for this technology to go from hiding away behind a glass barrier at a trade show to being a product that you can actually buy and take home. And also because, gosh darn it, it's really cool. It's also practical though. Depending on what you're doing, the optimal curvature of a display can change dramatically. So from an ergonomic standpoint, any conventional monitor will, at times, be too curved or maybe too flat. I got my hand stuck in the thing. But the Xenion Flex from Corsair fixes all that. I'll be the first to admit that it feels like kind of a bougie gimmick right now. But if you give this a generation or two to come down in price, I think this could be the on-desk equivalent of seat adjustments on your chair. It really does make a huge difference, but not in the way you might expect. What you probably expected though was this message from our sponsor. Smart Deploy, powered by PDQ.com. Smart Deploy maintains drivers for you. With over 1,500 driver packs to choose from, deploy any business class device with a single Windows image. Get your free license worth over $500 at smartdeploy.com slash LTT. Most gamers only have one gaming display. The square one beside it for Discord doesn't count. And I think it's fair to say that they expect it to last a very long time. That means that a cool party trick is not enough to justify giving the Xenion Flex that coveted place of honor front and center on the empty cannon bottle shelf that you call your desk. It also has to be a great monitor. Fortunately, I took it home for a week and it really is. I think I might've fallen in love with ultra wide again. I mean, it's not that it has the best specs. It runs at a resolution of 3440 by 1440 while top displays are pushing 4K or more. It hits 240 Hertz while the best esports displays are flirting with the 500 Hertz barrier. And it only hit about 700 nits brightness in our testing when we've had displays that can do double that for years. But what it is, is a complete package. From taking it out of the box to firing up your favorite game is an absolute treat. Uh, do we have a stool by any chance? Just use this one, Linus. I, it's I've 440. Just, no, no, no. Oh my God. No, it's, I won't. Tried to stop him, Jake. He said no. <laughs> Man, does all that ever look good, boys. And the low resolution is actually kind of an advantage in a way because if you're gonna push 240 Hertz, like you can't be running at 8K or whatever. A couple things worth noting. It's got a matte covering on the display, but because it's OLED, blacks still look outstanding. Man, the motion is just so good. This paired with a high-end gaming rig, there's just nothing like it. I don't know that this would necessarily be the best you can do for retro games, just because it doesn't include any kind of backlight strobing or black frame insertion, but for anything else. You go, now you guns. What the f The cops took you out, I don't know why. Wow, they took me out really fast. You must be some kind of criminal. Did I mention, by the way, it's G-Sync compatible and FreeSync Premium Pro certified with an advertised range of 40 to 240 Hertz, but it seems to work all the way down to 10 Hertz and starts duplicating frames at 50 Hertz. Talk about the driving experience. Oh, Fast yeah, travel right. somewhere else and then drive. There's right, 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 right. Yeah, 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 yeah. How okay. immersed are you? You're so immersed that Hold you stop making the video. Yeah, well, that's, that's, a, that's a fair point, actually. Uh, using this thing is just... There's no other way to describe it other than it's one of the best gaming experiences that I've had in a long while. Uh, when I first unpacked it at home, I fired up the Halo Infinite campaign just for testing, since I'm supposed to wait to play it co-op with Luke. And I ended up sitting there in the dark in my garage bench station below zero with like not even gloves on or anything for almost an hour just sitting and experiencing it. First thing that stood out about it after the size was absolutely the flexible panel. It's not that you're gonna wanna switch between completely flat and completely curved multiple times a day or every time you launch a different game. It's more about being able to adjust it exactly the way you like it. Kind of like the seat in your car. I mean, occasional tweaks from one day to the next might make sense. Maybe you're in the zone and you'd prefer a more upright posture right now. 
kind of like RGB. I see the real value in being able to tailor your setup to your preferences, forget about it, and completely focus on your game or on your work. It's about choice. That's what makes it a safer bet than I think any kind of fixed curve display, be it flat or curved. The thing is most people are buying monitors online these days, having never actually sat in front of them. And that is a scary proposition when you're spending high-end monitor money. I could probably make the decision, but I've had the benefit of trying a lot of different displays of different sizes with different curves. For most people, they might not have any idea if they like just a, a little curve, maybe around 1400R, or if they like a cranked curve, you know, all the way to 800R. It is so dependent on how far away you like your display and how you like to sit. I mean, if you're lounged back with a controller playing pixel cup soccer, you're probably gonna want it, you know, a little more like that, right? The second thing that stands out unintended, is the unique approach that Corsair took to the stand. Have you ever seen front I.O. like this on a monitor? It does have some drawbacks, more on those later, but we get not only two USB-A ports for mouse and keyboard dongles or thumb drives, but a headphone jack and all of our menu navigation in plain sight with easy to read labels. Some well, might find this approach kind of ugly, especially with the uh, chin bar handle here. But it was so refreshing not to have to get intimate with my monitor just to make an OSD adjustment or plug in a cable. Then on the back, we get this long strip of ports, two HDMI 2.1s, DisplayPort 1.4, a USB-C DP alt mode input, and two more USB-As with a Type-C upstream port to connect the other ports to your PC. Finally, a DC barrel plug. It's kind of cluttered, I especially would have hoped for an internal power supply with such a large footprint on this thing already, but it is so functional that for all of its flaws, I just don't see how I could ever want to go back to fumbling with the lock on an upward plugged display port ever again. Though I might not have a choice. There's one important detail that we need to discuss before we move on. The waffle shirt from LTTstore.com not only looks great, but it is super comfortable too. Oh, and also, you cannot VESA mount this display. You see, just because the OLED panel is flexible doesn't mean that a circuit board is flexible. So most of the electronics are actually housed in the stand rather than up in here. It's a big part of how they got away with putting all the I.O. and physical buttons up front the way that they did. I personally didn't find the default height of it to be a problem. I actually didn't even realize that height adjustment was missing until Ploof brought it up in our review of this script. You know, it's got a little bit of tilt. I, I never thought to change it. But someone out there will be sorely, again pun intended, disappointed and it could be a deal breaker for them. Another possible deal breaker is the pixel density. Don't get me wrong, any content from movies to gameplay looks amazing on this display. And the lower resolution is actually a key part of how your GPU might actually have any hope of driving this thing at 240 hertz. However, 83 pixels per inch is a little low by today's standards, especially for a monitor that might tempt you in close with such an aggressive curve. I mean, with a little bit of super sampling, you're not gonna notice it in a fast paced game like Doom. But on the desktop, text clarity is not great unless you sit quite a bit farther back, requiring a much deeper desk. You could get a similar 4K variant of this idea with the LG 42 LX3 QPUA, but it's 16 by nine rather than ultra wide, it's smaller, it's only 120 Hertz, and it costs a thousand dollars more than this at regular price. And that assumes you can even find one. I genuinely don't think they actually made many and you might wanna stay away anyway, since two out of the five reviews across Best Buy and Amazon mention a defective curve adjustment motor. Knowing that this is your only choice then for a bendable monitor, how good is it? We asked our labs team and here's what they sent back. It's using an LG W OLED panel, so you can expect a beautiful image with inky blacks and 10-bit color depth. We've got a Delta E average of less than one in sRGB mode after adjusting the color temperature. We weren't happy about having to adjust the color temperature, but we were very happy about being able to do it since many monitors don't allow it. And it manages an impressive color gamut, reaching 98% of the DCI-P3 color space and 75% of Rec 2020. All of that is great. And it seems like the days of having to choose between gaming and content creation 
are well behind us at this point. With that said though, it is absolutely a gamer's monitor. At 240 hertz refresh rate, it is almost double the speed of nearly every other OLED display on the market. And thanks to its OLED pixels, the response times are so fast that you can pretty much kiss any concerns you might have had about motion clarity. Bye bye Look at this sea of green that we got with the OSRTT V2. Mwah. But we did find some downsides. This is the PQ EOTF in HDR mode. That is the display's ability to convert a video signal into the correct brightness value. And you can see that it's a little off. And what this does is it throws off in-game HDR calibration and HDR color accuracy. It's still gonna impress everyone but your professional colorist friend, but at this price point, we can't ignore any flaws. And there's an even bigger one. As much as I love gaming on this thing and didn't personally find the brightness to be an issue, Corsair claims that thanks to their use of the latest LG panel technology, they should be able to hit 1000 nits in a 3% window in HDR. And we just could not get anywhere close to that. Both of our units, we had two of them, fell short of 700 nits, let alone 1000 nits, which, along with analysis of the subpixel arrangement, seems to suggest that rather than using LG's top-of-the-line EX panel technology, like you might find in their 2022 TVs, Corsair is actually using something more similar to LG's 2021 models. A later firmware update did improve our results, netting roughly 200 extra nits of peak brightness, but it still fell short. It's weird because their testing results are seeing a thousand nits, so it could be a calibration issue on their end or our end, or it could be down to the panel lottery. It's not a huge problem for performance. I mean, nothing really would prevent Corsair from pushing the Xenion Flex to that rated thousand nits, even if it doesn't have an EX panel. But if it's using the older panel type, which is less efficient, that could affect the longevity of the pixels, which, as you know, is a major concern for any OLED type display. Corsair has taken steps to address this through the inclusion of pixel shift and pixel cleaner routines, and they're backing the Xenion Flex with a three-year warranty. But if my personal experience is anything to go by, I would definitely recommend a plain black desktop wallpaper with hidden icons and an auto-hide taskbar. With that said, if you see anything like this, don't freak out. We noticed uniformity anomalies at between 10 and 30% gray on both of our units, but we found that it wasn't distracting in real day-to-day -day use, and it could be easily remedied by burning in the display for a while. I've got high hopes that some of our other concerns will go away in time as well. One of Corsair's biggest advantages compared to even some other high-end displays is that they've designed the Xenion Flex with user-upgradable firmware. I mean, I guess you might need that for the IQ RGB software integration that they're planning for next year. Sounds cool. They won't be able to fix everything with firmware though. The 24 gigabit per second HDMI 2.1 ports mean that you'll probably always be stuck with lower color depth on the PS5. And you're gonna get some fringing on high contrast text borders until Microsoft fixes clear type with support for this subpixel arrangement. But if your primary concern is PC gaming, I doubt that these or any of the Xenion Flex's other flaws are going to stand in your way. It's far more likely to be your SO when they see how much it costs. At least you can give them comfort when they know that it doesn't cost as much as our sponsor paid for this segue to... Thanks to Grammarly for sponsoring this video. When it comes to work, communication is key, even if you don't have a writing job. Miscommunication can cause confusion with your team and lead to delayed projects. That's why we recommend checking out Grammarly's premium advanced tone suggestions, which can help reframe your communication to be positive and productive. Grammarly's premium tone rewrite suggestions also reframe negative language to be more solution focused. Simply install the desktop app, log in and start typing. The holiday season is a busy time and Grammarly helps business teams keep their writing professional and mistake free to reach deadlines faster. Work smarter, not harder. And just the right tone can move any project forward. When you write it, just write with Grammarly. Go to grammarly.com slash LTT to sign up for an account and get 20% off Grammarly Premium today to help get your work done and build strong relationships. If you like this video, check out this one on the very first curved ultra wide that I checked out like eight years ago. It's not exactly a new idea, but, but, but could it do this? No, 